Hello and welcome to the Fave English podcast, your one-stop shop for Venezuelan football in English, bringing you fortnightly episodes dedicated to the Venezuelan league, the national teams and the myriad of Venezuelan players around the world. This is a very special episode of the Footway English podcast today. It's a bonus episode breaking from the fortnightly routine, but for very good reason. Me and Dominic have both had uh, exciting days waiting on news to break. There's been a few twists and turns, Dominic. <laughs> you, you can take this one on. What are, we, what are we doing this podcast for? What's happened? The much anticipated uh, loan of... Freddy Vargas from Deportivo Lara to uh, FC Dallas of MLS. Yeah, and it's a move that we've known about, um, you and I, for, for quite a few days now. Uh, it wasn't clear until just now, uh, just the past hour or so, that it was going to be a loan with an option to buy. Uh, we were expecting it to, to be a straightforward transfer. And then we saw on Instagram that, that Deportivo Lara had announced that he'd renewed his contract for two years. I definitely didn't have a heart attack when I saw that, uh, that Instagram post on my snack break. So, yeah, it, uh, it, did, it almost seemed like this wasn't going to happen for a little bit, but here we are um, with even more, even more to look into, really, because this being alone, I think, kind of adds to uh, what to read into it um, and stands out a little bit from, from previous transfers from Liga Footway to MLS in the last year or so. So, yeah. Yeah, and we're recording this on, on Wednesday night. When this goes out, uh, it should be Thursday, in, in less of unexpected delay. So we are recording this ahead of uh, the news going public, uh, which is a, a great thing. But it does mean if this all goes wrong, I'll be editing all this. And I guess maybe you'll <laughs> never hear this at all. So, Freddie Vargas, what can you tell us about him, Dominic? What can Dallas fans expect? So, Dallas uh, have... A situation uh, on the wing on both sides of uh, both wings rather uh, in the sense that they have one winger right the right winger uh, Barrios who has just left and then on the left they have uh, I'm not sure how to say his name uh, Fafa uh, Picolt who uh, stands out just a little bit in the sense that he's a lot older than the rest of the squad so you have a situation where to, uh, and, and Barrios was also on, on the older side. Uh, so you have a situation where both of your winners that were starting the majority of your matches in the last year are either gone or seem maybe like they're rolling out of the picture. Uh, Vargas comes in at the, the young age of 21. I don't recall when his birthday is, so he might be 22 during the season. But uh, comes in at a, a relatively young age uh, off of a really strong year uh, in Liga Footway, which of course ended with Lara uh, finishing third, I guess, technically, um, and securing uh, uh, a spot in the second stage of uh, Copa Libertadores uh, qualification. Uh, he had, uh, as, as we'll talk more, uh, he had certainly a standout season, uh, scored a couple really memorable goals that have been shared around more since. Um, and I think what, what Dallas can definitely get out of this is um, some youth in a position where they didn't have it. Um, and also uh, just a, a really new element in a team that otherwise uh, has a pretty consistent influence from their academy uh, and American players. So that they, they could be getting a little, a little mixture of something they haven't had for, for a while, both in terms of nationality, but also just in terms of where a player is coming from, where they've learned from. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, we spoke about him standing out in, in Deportivo Lara's team this season. And he stood out across the league. He had the, the highest in-stat index rating at Deportivo Lara last season. He was only second in the league to Robert Hernandez, who's also departed Liga Footway. He's joined Bolivian side Always Ready from uh, Caracas FC, where he had the captaincy. And uh, Freddy Vargas was the second top scorer for, for Deportivo Lara with five goals from 11 shots on target. He created the most chances for his side with 23 in 13 games, which was the, the second highest in the league, and uh, completed the most key passes in the league with 19. Uh, the second best that Lara was at 11 behind on eight. So he really was key to their attacking play. Whilst holding on to the ball successfully comes very naturally to Freddie. 
He completed the most successful dribbles in the league with 75, uh, some 14 ahead of second place Darwin uh, Mateus, uh, or Mateus, an exciting young winger who has been at Zamora FC for a few years now. For all of uh, Freddie's creativity, it may be surprising to see he only registered three assists, uh, but his, his XA, his expected assist, was actually nine, which was the highest in the league, a difference of six uh, between actual and expected assists, which to me shows that he was creating clear-cut chances for teammates who, who failed to put them away, um, whereas he actually exceeded expectations when it came to scoring himself, uh, grabbing five goals, like I said, uh, but from an XG of 2.7. Uh, in, including, like you alluded to, a, a fantastic 25-yard strike against eventual champions Deportivo uh, La Guaira, which uh, won Lara that game. Um, a key game when we look back at the season, like La Guaira only won the, won the league on the last day by a single point. Um, Dominic said he's, he's just 21, um, remarkably made his 100th appearance for Lara this season too. Uh, but ultimately, Deportivo Lara finished second in a 16-game in a Group A, um, and like Dominic said, qualified for the, the second round of Copa Libertadores qualifying. They've done really well in recent years uh, with a consistent leadership in Leo Gonzalez, the head coach, who um, took them to the runners-up spots in the, the Venezuelan Primera Division in 2017 and 2018, with Freddy Vargas's influence increasing each year, actually grabbing a goal in the final, um, in 2018 when he would have only been 18 years old himself. This season was really his, his breakthrough season in terms of obviously attracting attention overseas. He was a star man in a team expertly managed um, and Gonzalez, like I said, he's also left this season. So where this leaves Lara for, for Copa Libertadores qualification um, will be interesting. There's rumours Martin Brignani, who was manager of Estudiantes de Merida, Another Venezuelan side last season, also in the Copa Libertadores, uh, is going to be coming in as a, the new DT. But under Gonzalez, uh, he put a lot of faith in a host of homegrown young talent, including Vargas, fielding 12 players who'd come through Deportivo Lara's youth ranks uh, and was very much rewarded for doing so. And this is probably a perfect point to hand over to Dominic, who can explain why someone coming out of that environment at Deportivo Lara could be a perfect match for the setup at FC Dallas. Yeah, so, and, and I think we even um, may have touched on this in the, in the previous episode. Uh, one of the things that immediately stood out when, when I heard, you know, that he might be going to FC Dallas, even before considering the youth setup at Lara, is uh, this is a great club historically for young players. Uh, and a huge part of that comes from uh, the infrastructure the club has built over the years, uh, both in terms of their academy structure, having a reserve team that plays competitive football in the form of North Texas, who are in the third division, uh, and also just technology. You know, there's been a lot of talk about in the last, well, especially after the rumors came out about him uh, in Venezuelan circles about how Dallas used drones and, and you know, different video programs and really... Um, really dig into all the ways they can kind of collect information, even at the uh, academy level. Uh, and probably the best way to illustrate the success of that is, of course, you know, a lot of teams say they have good academies, but how do you define that? Uh, is that FC Dallas has proven quite recently to be one of the most effective exporters of young players to Europe, uh, particularly in the forms of uh, a couple players who are not just playing in Europe, but actually playing for, I mean, some of the highest rated clubs in, in the world. Uh, so you have Weston McKinney, who uh, is owned by Schalke, uh, or Schalke, uh, but is on loan to Juventus uh, and has been a starter on both teams. Uh, you have uh, Chris Richards, who is at, uh, who's only 20, who is at Bayern Munich and has played for both the first and second team. Uh, Reggie Cannon is at Bao Vista, who are admittedly struggling right now in the Portuguese first division. But again, uh, at 22, it's quite a solid move for an American player. Uh, all three of those guys are uh, Dallas Academy products. Uh, Cannon is the only one that had significant MLS minutes for them. Uh, and then just literally today, there's been further developments. I saw, uh, for instance, that Fabrizio Romano was just tweeting about this, that Brian uh, Reynolds is, uh, is supposed to soon be moving to Serie A long-term for Juventus, but uh, uh, because of some international player slot sort of rules in Serie A, they, he looks like he's going to be loaned to Benevento or 
something along those lines. But point being, very young guy, he's 19, very young guy in MLS moving to Serie A. Uh, again, Dallas Academy product. So this is a, t- and admittedly, those are all American players, and it's a little different than a guy coming in. But this is a team that has shown both in terms of just the quality of the technology, quality of exports. Um, the quality of their league play, FC Dallas is pretty consistently a strong team in MLS. Uh, their third or their reserve team in the third division, side note, won the third division two years ago now. Um, this, is a, this is a structure that is quite successful in all the ways you would mark success for a youth development system. So seeing a 20-year-old player move into that system, uh, to me, is, is exciting regardless of whether he's American or not. Um, and regardless of whether or not it's a loan or not, uh, that to me is a really encouraging sign for his further development. Um, and, and being a young guy moving to a different country, playing in a different league, you certainly want that team to have a reputation for, for being good with young players. So all those ch- boxes are being checked for me, uh, which makes this move seem very, uh, very healthy. And in terms of in terms of where Dallas is is based geographically in the states, are there are there other teams in in MLS that are nearby? Yeah, so Dallas, uh, of, of course, is, is in Texas, Dallas, Texas. Um, and uh, Texas will actually have two other teams in MLS next season. Uh, Houston already had a team for many years, the Houston Dynamo. Uh, and then Austin, will, uh, which is the capital of Texas, uh, will also have a team, a new expansion team this year. Um, and Texas is quite a large state. So all those teams are actually quite far from one another, despite being in one state. Um, but, but of course, share, sharing a state together, um, Dallas and Houston, for instance, you know, or, or have a bit of a rivalry. Uh, and, and of course, our also all three will be a couple hours or so away from the Mexican border. Um, you know, we've talked in the past about the, the, the influence that can always have on, on helping a, a player, for instance, a player from Latin America, um, maybe slide into a new environment better being in a state that's pretty immersed in Latin American culture, albeit more um, Mexican or Central American than, than Venezuelan. But uh, language-wise, it might be more accessible to a player. Um, and the team itself has many Latin American players, both um, Americans who are ethnically Latin American or people um, from Latin America. So, One thing that's like testament to, to Freddy Vargas' quality um, and his career pre- progression so far is is Deportivo Lara are a good side in Venezuelan football but even more notably is they have a large catchment area and very little competition uh Deportivo Lara the prime team in in Lara State um and Freddy Vargas has done very well to break through to to get to the first team there's a huge pool of talent as you know very well having spoken to Chente Molina uh, a player that came from Deportivo Lara came through the youth ranks and is now at Caracas FC so what can you tell us about the the realities of football in Lara and uh, like give people like an insight into sort of like that path that Freddy Vargas has walked so far yeah so as, as you mentioned uh, you know now wow now I must it almost was probably a year ago now or maybe nine eight months ago but uh, we we had or I had talked to Chente Molina now at Caracas FC uh, just for for an interview for for the, the Twitter page, and he had talked about um, you know the the realities of having a, a sizable state in the form of Lara that only has one top division uh, club uh, in comparison to obviously other parts of the country we, you can think of that have usually one or two top division maybe one or two second division. Uh, clubs consistently. Um, Caracas obviously always, recently has had two or three clubs in the top division every every season now. Um, gonna have more this this, this coming season too. Um, and and so you know a, as one would expect, uh, Chente mentioned that 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 provides problems. I mean you have youth players who you know are usually relying on what local opportunity there is. If you're a kid in any country even you're not going to really benefit from what's going on several states of way. You need something that is in arm's reach. So to have only really one club with that scale of influence or that scale of opportunity, it's tough. And the guys that make it as far as Vargas has, that's a sign of getting through a lot of challenges that are unique to that situation. 
Yeah, Deportivo Lara were a particularly young side this tournament, but they're probably one of the most exciting teams to watch. We we watched pretty much every single game that was televised, about 135 games in the space of two months. And um, Lara played some of the most exciting football in a group that was the more exciting group. And key to that was a lot of young players, as well as Freddy Vargas. There's Jesus Bueno, a centre midfielder who's very good. Uh, another player that I really like, uh, Telasco Segovia, a 17-year-old who's been called up to the under-20s, um, as well as Castellanos. So they, they have a lot of young talent. And for Freddy Vargas to stand out in that team uh, is, is no easy feat at all. Do you think in this, uh, with this loan, can you envisage Freddy Vargas hitting the ground running, going, going straight into things? I think that's definitely possible. You know, there is this small asterisk to any predictions of, of this upcoming MLS season, just in the sense that it's not completely clear how that's all going to go. Obviously, a lot of any league that's starting right now, there's, you know, some questions about how are things going to format and all that stuff. Um, that, that aside, uh, particularly because, as I, I believe I noted earlier, he is basically competing for a spot with a dramatically older player than, than himself. I think there is definitely room for him to hit the ground running. The fact that the club is taking him on loan, I have to imagine, means that they have clear intent of giving him a chance. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, the, the obvious thing is, like, who are they going to play the first three, four games, right? If Dallas get a really rough schedule to open up, I don't know if they're going to risk that on him. Who knows? But um, that aside, I mean, I, I would imagine – they would give him a strong chance. A comparable situation that actually involves Dallas um, is uh, in 2017, they took on Carlos uh, Cermeno on loan from Tachira uh, for, the, for the 2017 season. Uh, and he played, I want to say, seven or eight games. Wasn't an immensely um, eventful loan, but the positive I take from that loan is that he was given opportunities. Like there wasn't, there, you know, you see sometimes, even occasionally in MLS, people get taken on loan or, or as a signing, and it's not clear the club ever necessarily even had a plan of how to use them. Um, Dallas, in, in the case of Cermeno, and actually also Luis Gonzalez, um, who was there the same year and left that year as well, um, they were both given ample opportunities. It didn't necessarily work out long term, which is why they only stayed for one season, but the club didn't show like um, any any sort of maybe hesitance or assumptions that it wouldn't work out because maybe they had come from a, a lead that was deemed weaker than like the Argentinian guy they signed or whatever you know, that kind of stuff that you might be afraid of happening. Um, so yeah, I, I think that again he has the room, particularly because of his youth, to really fight for something in that squad right away. Uh, this is a squad that or a team that like. Um, like to attack well. They're, they're not an intensely possessive team. I actually stumbled upon an interesting statistic. Just or I looked at their last 15 games, regular season and playoffs, just to kind of look around at some basic play style uh, stuff. Uh, and they actually had w worse results the more possession they had. <laughs> um, the, their highest possession was 72%. They lost that game 2-0. And their, best, their, or their lowest possession was 36%. And they won that game. But uh, it, it's a game that av they averaged about 50% possession. But uh, it's a team that, that likes to play with the ball, but also will probably ask him to do quite a bit of defending. Um, and, and, and I think those are both things he's capable of. The fact that he can score a good goal now and then will certainly also encourage them. So, yeah, I, 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 I see room for him to thrive. If he can, if he can mentally be ready, um, and, of course, if the coaching staff are willing to, you know, start him. Yeah, and you said there about being asked to do some defensive work. Um, and actually, he's, he's very much a player on the ascendancy, as, as we've established. Every metric you'd want to judge a winger on, he improved in 2020 from 2019. Goals, assists, key passes, shots, cross, they all went up, uh, as did his um, challenge success rate and his succession with dribbles as well. And he even started to win more tackles and more aerial duels from, from 2019 to 2020. So that defensive workload, if you like, um, he's, he's been improving that too. He did get a couple of yellow cards this season, um, all in like a four-game spell, including uh, a sending off for two yellows. 
Um, but those yellow cards came in, in a condensed spell. Like there was, I think, four yellow cards in four games. Um, and then I think he only got one uh, card for the rest of the season. Um, but that is still four to five yellow cards in, in 13 games, which, you know, that's like roughly one in three. Um, so, but with Freddy Vargas, you were saying uh, about the, the move to Dallas and the loan. Um, what's noticeable um, and, and what's noteworthy is it's a loan with an option to buy. It's not a loan with an obligation to buy. And we've seen today, and when you're listening to this yesterday on Wednesday, um, he's signed prior to this loan a two-year contract extension with Deportivo Lara. If he does well this year in, in MLS, uh, Dallas don't have the obligation to buy with a fixed fee and they've got an option to buy and we don't know if there's a fixed fee on that um but a a year in mls where um he could have a, a great season could really shoot his market value up what's interesting is that we know that there were other offers on the table um dallas fc weren't the only team that had expressed an interest in in freddie vargas um unfortunately i don't know who the other teams were, uh, but we know there were other offers on the table. Um, and rumoured, I can't confirm, but rumoured a couple of months ago, uh, the Red Bull group were interested in acquiring him. Uh, I don't know for, for what franchise of the Red Bull group, but supposedly there was interest there. Dallas have got him. They're going to have him for a year. What is your expectation and what can Dallas fans expect in terms of who would you compare him to for similar players? Because I looked on, on Instat, trying to look for players um, that, that MLS fans would be familiar with. Um, and there weren't too many. Most of the players that he were he was comparable with play in, in maybe other South American countries or some leagues like Turkey and Europe. So who would you who would you give as a familiar name for Dallas fans to to look to for a, a similar player? It's an interesting question. Well, as far as um, what to expect, I I think they should be expecting uh, him to to be an active part of the squad. Not to not as a, to go on a side tangent, but I I don't see this going the way that the Jason Ramirez deal has gone, where he's kind of arrived and then not played much at all. I see that changing this year, but, you know, the, for a first year in MLS, it, it was a lot quieter than I think a lot of people expected. I don't quite see that happening here, um, just because they seem to be deliberately making space for signings like this. Remember that MLS has very stringent international player slot rules. So they sold Barrios or traded, you know, I don't know the details of that deal, but, you know, let him go. Um, he's Colombian, so he was taking up one of those slots. Um, Bringing bring in a Venezuelan I, that certainly won't have a green card yet, and so we'll take one of those slots. Um, but that, I mean, that to me shows that they have every intention of finding what they can use with him. Um, compar comparable players is interesting because I'm trying to think of a, of a good comparable wing option, um, and a lot of the wingers I'm thinking of are, are, are older, but. Um, you know, well, RSL fans might disagree with me on this. The first person that's actually coming to mind is, is Corey Baird, who is an R RSL player that just moved to LAFC. Not because they necessarily play dramatically similar, but just in the sense that high energy, young guy, can play on the wing, although Corey Baird plays like four different positions. But, uh, you know, very capable, very creative. Uh, Seems like he should be maybe more of a playmaker, as, your, as the stats you mentioned earlier implied, but actually kind of scores a little more than, than assists. Um, so maybe to a degree, there's a similarity there. I don't want to get called on on that if this all goes wrong, but, but that, that's a person that comes to mind. Um, and, and again, there's that age connection. Uh, and, and, you know, if, if there's any truth to that comparison, I think that is exactly what Dallas probably want this to be, right? Because they find themselves with two guys that are in positions that need to be pretty high energy. They're getting older. Um, neither of them were particularly effective this last season, which is funny because Dallas actually did pretty well. But the stats for, for um, Barrios and, and Picolt aren't great. They, their numbers are all quite low, actually. Uh, so... Looking for, you know, I, I think that's probably what Dallas dream of this ending up as, 
young guy comes in, has that energy, has that creativity comparable to a couple other teams in the league, and um, kind of finishes the puzzle of a team that otherwise largely depends on youth, but wasn't depending on youth in those two positions. Yeah, and it's, it's worth pointing out for anyone that, that uh, doesn't know by now, Freddie Vargas is left-footed, um, but something really strong about his game is he has a very, very strong uh, weak foot. It, it's put down as one of his, his key strengths on, on his player profile provided by Instat. Um, after, after his weak foot ability comes his dribbling skills. Uh, like I said, most successful dribbles in the league with 75 um, and some way ahead of, of the next best dribbler in the league. And then playmaking and counter-attacks. This is a guy with pace um, and, and very good ball control. When it came to the end of the, the Venezuelan season, Vargas was, was up there with, with every metric, but he was also like a favourite for, for people to watch. And that was very clear um, from the beginning. I think after him, the second most exciting player for me in particular to watch in Group A was Freddy Gondola. Uh, who had a great season with Yara Koyanos and is now signed for Deportivo Tachira, which will be playing the group stages of, of the Copa Libertadores as a, a Venezuelan representative. Vargas, in our rankings, he was in the Group A team of the year, he was in the overall team of the year, and he finished second in the Player of the Year poll that we ran on Twitter. The winner was Jose Contreras, the goalkeeper from Deportivo Tachira, who has now gone to Colombia to play for Deportivo Pasto. So, Vargas, to wrap up my expectation and Dominic's expectation for him in MLS this season. In one sentence, Dom, you can go first. 2021 for Freddie Vargas, what does it look like? This is going to be a long sentence. Ever since Joseph Martinez entered MLS, there's been a lot more Venezuelans entering this league. And a lot of them have done very well and a lot of them have done quite poorly. I can't help but feel like Vargas has to be one that does well because I just don't see the warn like some of the the warning signs or red flags that came with some of the players that it didn't work out for. I think that this has the potential to be a really strong move. I think this has the potential to be an impact move out of League of Foot Bay or out of Venezuelan football in general. The way that Joseph Martinez was, the way that El Brujo was, the way that Pablo Bonilla, uh, Bonilla sort of has been for Portland. Um, I, I, I see this being a very positive season, at the least, for him and for the club. For me, as you know, um, I'm not a, a big MLS watcher. I'm a, a big Venezuelan football watcher and, and, and watch a lot of football in general. Um, watch the odd MLS game, but with, with no speciality whatsoever, uh, which makes me incredibly grateful for, for you being here. But I think Vargas will do well. I'm hoping uh, it will be more of a, a Brujo Martinez situation um, rather than Jason Ramirez, albeit only a year to judge uh, Ramirez on so far. Um, and I think there's a few things that, that support that um, off the pitch as well. Like he's already settled with, with, his, with his partner. Um, I believe they've got a young child as well. Uh, and his, his agent is uh, a really sensible, nice guy, invested in Lara. Um, he has money in the a second team in Lara that play in the second division. So I think the support that Freddy Vargas has off the pitch, which can often help ground a player, especially when they're in another country, um, will really play into that. 21 years old is young, but he's been a first team player for, for three year, years now, 100 games, experience in two Copa Libertadores campaigns. Um, and experience in, in high quality finals in, in Venezuela. That was for me a long sentence, too. <laughs> Dominic, can, thank can you I very just much. Note something real quick. Because mm -hmm. you mentioned the young, I, I want to reiterate this because I understand that a lot of people, maybe not necessarily you, but like yourself, that don't watch MLS won't necessarily realize this. But it's important to note that MLS is no longer an old player league. I, I think it's a really important note to make sure people understand that. I know that's the, the, the stereotype, and a stereotype that was earned in many ways, but it has been shown plain and clear by the signing of players that are undisputably great, like Wayne Rooney and Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Fashion Schweinsteiger, that nowadays in MLS, if you sign a star, a European star, it doesn't guarantee you anything. Those three players I just listed won zero trophies in MLS. Zero nothing meanwhile the teams that have been winning recently have been players that are teams rather that have invested in young players often from latin america so 
you know, this isn't a young guy stumbling into a league that's for 30 year old guys that played in the Premier League for five years. This is a young guy coming into a league that in many ways has become designed for people like him. I think that's a really important thing to emphasize. So I just wanted to, to note that. Yeah, and I agree. Whilst I don't watch much MLS uh, at all, I do read a lot about sport in, in the US. Um, and it's one of the things that I, I do admire uh, in their approach to sport. The facilities are, are outstanding at so many clubs and, and Vargas is, I imagine, really going to see that difference from day one. And hopefully, even if at the end of this loan he doesn't stay, he's going to develop so much as a, an athlete. Thank you very much for joining us on this uh, bonus episode of the Footvay English podcast, especially to Dallas fans that may be joining us for the first time. Hopefully you stick around. We'll be following Freddie Vargas with much intensity in 2021.